Hi again. So one of the things I love about MSNBC is that I could turn the TV to MSNBC pretty much any time during prime time or in the wee hours of the morning, and odds are I will see something that gives me a great basis for one of these videos. Because if you're not familiar with MSNBC's lineup, then just know that from 5 p.m. Eastern Time, 4 p.m. Middle America Time, until 5 a.m. Eastern Time, it is all opinion programming. There is no news program in any one of those time slots. It's all opinion and analysis programs, and there is a dearth of intelligent conversation and an abundance of talking. So it's just a great source of fodder for guys like me. And uh, the other night, I tuned to, um, let's see, it was The Last Word with Lawrence O'Donnell. And this was the day after Mitt Romney had won the Florida primary. And he was talking about, well, let me just, this is how he opened it. Say to someone who maybe voted for Obama in 2008 uh, and is on the fence now, um, why he deserves the second term. He's led the country through a very difficult time. Uh, we have a long way to go. We're in a much different place than we were when he got there. And he has a vision of how to build a country, as I said, and an economy uh, in which uh, hard work pays off, responsibility is rewarded, everybody plays by the same rules, and everybody gets uh, a fair shake. Now, my immediate reaction to that was if that is the president's pitch for re-election, then I don't even think he's going to be close. This should be an easy win for whoever the Republican candidate for president is. But I have a feeling that over time they'll fine-tune their message and this will be a close election no matter who wins. But I would just like to break down that interview using subtitles, if I may. I think uh, I would say that he's led the country through a very difficult time. Uh, we have a long way to go. We're in a much different place than we were when he got there. And he has a vision of how to build, as I said, and an economy uh, in which uh, hard work pays off, responsibility is rewarded, everybody is by the same rules, and everybody gets uh, a fair shake. And okay, so that's how I feel. Obviously, some people will feel differently. This was Lawrence O'Donnell's reaction to what Axelrod just said. Of course, you could also say, don't let the people who hate the president win. Don't let the racists win. Don't let the protectors of billionaires win. Don't let the bomb Iran tonight warmongers win. But the Obama campaign will, of course, say none of those things. They will take a higher road along the lines of what David Axelrod just said. And with the political world focused on who's going to win Florida tomorrow. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, before we talk about Florida, then I just want to break down what Lawrence O'Donnell just said. According to him, Republicans hate the president, are racists, are protectors of billionaires, and bomb Iran tonight warmongers. Now, one of those, I just have to say, as to being protectors of billionaires, that I won't dispute, and I certainly hope that come November, Americans elect a president who actually will protect all Americans, including billionaires. I don't know whether Lawrence O'Donnell is implying that billionaires don't deserve protection the same as the rest of Americans. I think we should elect a president who will work to keep us all safe. But, you know, uh, those other things, I mean, wow. Uh, that's just, that just goes to show you how these people think, folks. But, uh, anyway, the other thing I just wanted to call attention to in that clip was him talking about David Axelrod taking the high road. It, I mean, this, okay, when has the Obama campaign ever taken the high road? Heck, when has this administration ever taken the high road? This president has been so petulant, vindictive, 
impudent, what, whatever you want to say to describe President Obama, taking the high road is something that I have never thought he has done. I mean, he ran a really nasty campaign against John McCain in 2008. I'm sure he's going to run a nasty campaign in 2012. And if this administration hasn't even taken the high road, then what reason is there to believe that the Obama re-election campaign, the people whose sole objective it is to keep President Obama in power, will take the high road this time around? It's... All right. Anyway, let, let's get back to the thing. Florida... Let's think about the much more important question of who's going to win Florida in November. President Obama won Florida in 2008 with 51% of the vote. A new NBC News Marist poll of Florida voters shows them evenly split on President Obama's job performance with 46% approving and 46% disapproving. That's not normally a good sign for an incumbent president. But when matched in a one-on-one, -on -one, against Republican Mitt Romney, President Obama runs comfortably ahead right now with 49% to Romney's 41%. Joining me now to discuss who has the best chance at Florida's 29 electoral votes in November, New York Magazine's John Heilman and Adam Smith, the political editor for the Tampa Bay Times. Thanks for joining me tonight, guys. Uh, Adam, uh, to what's happening in Florida, uh, as it stands today with that 49 to 41 Obama lead, uh, and Florida with still a very high unemployment rate, 9.9 percent, what does the president have to do to hold on to that kind of lead going into November? Well, we had a poll out with the Miami Herald, Tampa Bay Times Miami Herald poll that showed Romney up a few points. So it's going to be a very close race, and this is going to be a tough, uh, Obama can absolutely win Florida's 29 electoral votes, but it's not going to be easy. It's going to be a lot harder than it was last time. And uh, John Heilman, to go back to what we were talking about before. Okay, now I just want to cut in to highlight something that just happened there. You, you'll notice that O'Donnell was trumpeting this NBC News Marist poll that showed Obama with a considerable lead over Mitt Romney in a Florida matchup in the general election. To look at that poll, then you would think Obama's sitting pretty. I mean, he's under 50 percent, but an eight-point margin is nothing to scoff at, and you would think that Mitt Romney has a lot of ground to make up if he's going to win the presidency in November. It's virtually impossible for a Republican to win the presidency without Florida. But I have to call attention to what you may not have real what may not have been obvious had Adam Smith of the Tampa Bay Times pointed it out was that that poll was just one of many and in fact other polls have well let's just say they've shown much different uh, results. And uh, as he's just mentioned, there's a poll they have. Also out today, Rasmussen just released the results of a survey that has Romney and Obama tied at 45% there. So what all this adds up to is that that NBC News Marist poll that gives Obama an eight-point lead is an outlier. And when Adam Smith, God bless him, pointed out that there was at least one other poll that showed Romney ahead, you know, Larry O'Donnell is like, all right, well, let's go back to what we were talking about before. Uh, John Heilman, uh, uh. The, the big subject that has not been discussed at, at the volume level, certainly that Democrats are going to want it discussed in Florida, are Social Security and Medicare, what congressional Republicans have tried to do to Medicare through the Paul Ryan plan, something that Mitt Romney has said he supports. Now, I love that comment because you'll notice the language he used. What Republicans have tried to do to those programs, the Paul Ryan plan, the Paul Ryan plan, he's 
referencing is the path to prosperity, a comprehensive, well, not comprehensive, but it, it, it specifically addresses entitlement programs and presents a plan to save those programs from bankruptcy. So basically what Larry O'Donnell is saying is that saving Social Security and Medicare, making them solvent, something no Democrat supported, by the way, no Democrat in either chamber voted in favor of that plan, uh, is apparently going to be a campaign issue. And it sounded like he thinks it's going to be a good campaign issue for Democrats. Uh, let, uh, let's watch what he said after that. I want to show some tape of Mitt Romney just tonight in Florida talking about Medicare. Let's listen to that. I understand a few of you here are, are, are on Medicare. Is that true? <laughs> that being the case, I hope you tell your friends who always fear that Republicans somehow might go after Medicare. You can tell them a couple of things. One, we will never go after Medicare or Social Security. We will protect those programs. But also, you make sure and tell them this. There's only one president in history that's cut Medicare $500 billion, and that's Barack Obama. And guess what he did it for? He did it to pay for Obamacare. So if I'm president, I will protect Medicare and Social Security for those that are currently retired or near retirement, and I'll make sure we keep those programs solvent for the next generations coming along. We will protect America's seniors and America's young people with programs that are designed to keep them well and safe. Wow. That just reinforces my belief that Mitt Romney, if he's the candidate in the general election, will have the upper hand over Obama on the issues of entitlement reform. I mean, that was very clear and a, a very clear-cut rebuke of Obama and his policies and a very forceful argument, I think, against President Obama that will really appeal to senior citizens who depend on Social Security and or Medicare. I'm not even sure why O'Donnell played that clip, because it makes Romney look like he's got the better of Obama on this issue. But listen to what O'Donnell said immediately after he played that clip. John Heilman, the uh, Republican debates in Florida did not really get into Social Security or Medicare, but the Obama campaign, when it goes to Florida, might just be talking about nothing else. Uh, I think that's right, Lawrence, and you know, look, um, Mitt Romney has had a problem, as we know, for the entirety of this campaign with the conservative base. One of the ways in which he's tried to remedy that problem was by coming down four square in favor of Paul Ryan's plan. And Paul Ryan's plan is one of the president's, what the president's people think, is one of his biggest weapons, one of the biggest clubs in his bag that they are going to use to try to beat Mitt Romney on the issues of Social Security, entitlement reforms, and Medicare. So John Heilman thinks that the Republicans' plan to save Social Security and Medicare from bankruptcy and ensure the long-term solvency of these incredibly popular programs is, in his words, one of the biggest clubs in Obama's bag that they're going to try to use to beat Mitt Romney. <laughs> I mean, the, here, here's what's really great. If you didn't think that was clueless enough on John Heilman's part, then listen to what he said next. I also think that when you heard Romney make that argument, it is somewhat, in, first of all, it's inconsistent with the Paul Ryan plan, but second of all, it leads him into a discussion of health care reform. And I just don't see how the discussion of health care reform is a discussion that he is going to be able to win versus President Obama, given everything that we know about the similarities between Romney care and Obamacare. That is also favorable turf for the president. Okay, um, two things. First, I would love to have been there and asked John Heilman how what Romney said in that clip was inconsistent with the Paul Ryan plan. It seems like what he said is exactly what Paul Ryan and the Republicans have been trying to do. You know, keep, uh, make no changes to the program for current retirees and people about to be retired, which I am opposed to, by the way. I think it, I, I, I think you should start making reforms 
uh, to the program that may possibly affect people currently retired, but I understand that that's not going to get passed. Uh, that, that, that's just not something you can get passed no matter who's in control of Congress. So aside from that, but uh, then making reforms to the program to ensure that they're there for future generations. That's perfectly consistent. I, I don't know what John Heilman was talking about there with the Paul Ryan plan, but the second thing is that uh, he thinks that this health care issue it helps President Obama because of, in his words, the similarities between what Romney did in Massachusetts with the president's health care reform law. First of all, if they're similar, then why would one person have the advantage over the other? Uh, that doesn't make any sense. And the other thing is that have you not seen Romney on the campaign trail? He talks about what he did in Massachusetts all the time. He's proud of it. He loves to point out the differences between his health care reform in Massachusetts and Obamacare. He loves it. He loves talking about how Obamacare is still unpopular with the majority of Americans while his plan, the voters of Massachusetts, overwhelmingly approve of what the critics on the right and the left have tried to tag as Romney care, as if it's somehow uh, a liability for him. He loves talking about his market-based reform ideas. He loves talking about how whereas Obama and the Democrats basically shut Republicans out of policy making on health care reform. He actually worked with the Democrats in the state legislature to get the reforms he wanted enacted. It, it's just, I mean, it's so ridiculous that they bring someone like that, uh, who says stuff like that, on TV for an interview, and O'Donnell didn't even challenge anything he said. He didn't ask him any questions. There is, in fact, what he followed that up with, there was one little thing he said there at the end of the segment that I'm going to save for a future video because it actually ties into something I wanted to do a separate video on. So I'll save that for another video. But uh, I'm going to... I just wanted to share this with you all. Uh, just so ridiculous. I just had to make a video. Anyway, let me know what you think. Post a comment below. Post a video response. Don't forget to subscribe. And until next time, don't mess with the right-wing genius.